Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna to be walking y'all through how we study for our clinical medicine course and pathophysiology. So we decided to group these two together because you're able to study them at the same time since they are really interconnected. <laughs> so the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and show you guys is how to use our Google Docs. So as y'all are gonna see, we are going to walk you through how we have our chart. So we have a, we're in our psychiatry module right now, and we have our psych chart that looks just like this. And to create something that looks pretty similar to this, mm -hmm. what you're gonna do is open up a new Google Doc, and you are going to make a table. So before you make a table, it's very important to go ahead and orient the page like the way that you want it. So you're gonna go to format, you're gonna do page orientation, you're gonna select landscape. This is going to give you the most space, that way you can work with it. So you're gonna go into insert after you've gotten oriented and you're gonna make a table. So we normally make a six by one table so that each uh, category has a name, clinical presentation, cause, mm -hmm. diagnosis, symptoms and treatment, and then any additional facts um, that we find pertinent to each diagnosis. Yes, so what you'll do is that you'll go ahead on the first one. I always like to put the name of the disease. Um, we usually just go ahead and call it disease. So we do disease. Then on the next one, we'll do the cause. During the cause, this is where you want to put kind of a little bit of your patho in it, if you have a lot of patho. Um, so we put our cause and we also put kind of who is more prevalent to get. So is it males that usually get it or is it females? Um, in our third one, we put, we, what do we do? We put clinical presentation. So these are gonna be when we're walking through our vignette, mm -hmm. anything that would be shown on a physical exam. So presents with a fever, presents with redness, presents mm -hmm. with petechiae, anything like that, we're gonna put under our clinical presentation. Yes, and then right after that, we'll go ahead and do labs and tests. So for example, um, you have a patient that comes in um, they're presenting with this type of disease, what labs do you want to order? So for example, you'll go ahead and put a UA, a CBC, um, you can also put your biopsies and all of that will go in this specific section, section of labs and tests. Our second to last one will be for treatment. So this is any kind of medication or any type of therapeutic treatment that can be used for any diagnosis whether it be a medication or whether it be like a lumbar puncture that will provide relief, anything like that, that will be considered a treatment for the disease. And then our last column is additional facts. During this column, you wanna add pictures or any additional facts, like the col column says, that you might need for the specific disease. So maybe you saw something while you were making notes, then you'll go ahead and add it to the specific section. And sometimes what we like to do is put specific pointers to each disease that we find in like Smarty Pants or Roche, whenever we're doing practice questions, mm -hmm. things that kind of help us know, oh, like this is really indicated for this disease. We'll put that in our additional facts to help guide us as we're studying. We love mnemonics. We look at a lot of med comic mnemonics and any little pictures. So we also add the pictures either in additional facts or we create an entire separate column for it at the very end of that chart. So the next thing you're going to do is modify your chart so that each row fits how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. So for example, our disease uh, chart, we don't like to make it super long because it takes up a lot of space mm -hmm. and we have a lot more causes, a lot more treatment, a lot more labs that we like to run. So we make our disease size a lot smaller. Another thing that we do is that we fix the margins. So as you can see, the, the chart that we have, it goes all the way to the very end, opposed to when you just make a chart on its own, it has these margins on the side. So what we do is that we drag the little ruler all the way to the end as much as it can, as well with the other side, and then we're able to move the row back and that'll create a very large row. And that's completely up to you as to how big or wide you want it. 
But we always find that we like to add a lot of information. So mm -hmm. the we try to make it as wide as the page will allow mm -hmm. so that we can put as much information in a condensed form. So we actually find that our causes, our clinical presentation, and sometimes our treatment is going to be the ones that we want with the most space. So we make sure that those are the biggest ones. Lab tests and additional notes, we kind of have them smaller. Um, only because there's some diseases that don't require a lot of notes or their treatment is just supportive treatment. So that's why we do it this way. So once you have your row set up, what we like to do is we go ahead and copy it and we add it as a header. The reason why we add it as a header is because we will have that at the very top of every single page and you don't have to add that specific section at the top of every single page and it'll actually save you a lot of time. Our program actually uses the flipped classroom method. So before we go to class, we actually have recordings and of lectures that we have to watch. So before we go to class, we make sure that our chart is done because once we are in our classroom, we go ahead and work on cases. And cases are done before class as well. So basically this is when we get a clinical case that a lot of our professors have seen when they're practicing mm -hmm. and they just make it like, you know, HIPAA compliant. So there's no identifying information, um, but they put like a case and it kind of, you know, we talk about what diagnosis we think it mm -hmm. is, what causes that disease, mm -hmm. and then how we would treat it, how it presents, basically everything that's in our chart. That's exactly how we walk through a case. And let's say we missed something or we didn't understand something correctly mm -hmm. when, while we were doing our chart. That is when we go ahead and add stuff into it. And this is really helpful because sometimes professors will say things in class that help us realize like, oh, this is why the disease presentation looks this way. Mm -hmm. And it's just a way for us to remember it. And so we'll just add it really quickly into our chart and it's right there and ready for us. And like we said before, we use this chart for ICM mostly, but we do have some patho in it. As far as ICM, we go ahead and write on our chart. Whenever we have a question or something that we don't understand, we always go ahead and circle it. So if we have a question, we can go ahead and ask the professor and then fill in the blanks from there. One of the ways that we use our chart is when we're studying using Smarty Pants. So this is Smarty Pants. We go ahead and go to courses and go to the specific module that we are studying. So for right now, we're gonna go into psychiatry. Once there, you're able to actually see lessons. So as you can see, it has pediatric developmental milestones and it has almost every single topic that you're gonna go ahead and review in your class. So as you go in it, let's go into child and elder abuse. It'll go ahead and sometimes it'll have a picmonic. It also has an osmosis link that you can use and you can watch the osmosis video that's actually related to the topic that you're learning. We'll have a case and then right under a case, it'll give you pearls on how to know this disease. And then what's really nice is at the very end, a lot of times you get questions that are mm -hmm. catered to the topic that you just learned about. So it'll give you like one or two questions mm -hmm. and you can answer and see where you're at. Exactly. And then at, let's say you're on the chart, right? And you're seeing something that says, watch out for caregivers with previous history of abuse, but you do not have that on your chart. You just go ahead and write it in. And that's what the beauty of having good notes and having your chart exported already. And you're able to write the notes as you go, because you know, as you write stuff, you remember things. Mm -hmm. So it definitely helps. Even highlighting too. Mm -hmm. um, I love to highlight things that make uh, the disease stand out to me um, and like especially important things that I need to know about the disease I put it in red mm -hmm. and I'm like Carmen you need to know this like highlight it in red and as far as highlighting I know Carmen likes to use a lot of different colors which so do I but I do it a little bit different every single disease has a designated color so if I'm highlighting in let's say green all of my writing is also going to be in the same color of green because the way that my mind works is, oh, I remember highlighting it in green in this specific page and I wrote this in green, then I'm able to correlate everything and for some reason, it works. For me, I actually do it by the day. So each day's chart has one highlight color. 
Um, I don't know why that works for me. It just does. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't get, like, discombobulated in my mind. It just kind of works for me. But whatever works for you. If you need to do it Adi's way, if you do it my way, it's all up to you and how your brain works in, in processing the information. Yes. So that was Smarty Pants. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, a couple of questions that they also have. What I do is I go to exams and then I go to questions. So I would go to the psychiatry exam. And right here it shows you that you have 75 questions to complete. You're able to do all of the questions. And let's say you get, I'm not gonna read this for you guys, but let's say this was the one that you put. It's going to tell you why you got it wrong or give you a little hint and tell you maybe if you think about it this way, you'll be able to get the right answer. And then you'll go ahead and click until you get the correct answer. Once you get that correct answer, it'll actually give you an explanation, which we really like because if it's something that we absolutely did not know and it was not in our chart, we just go ahead and write it in. And that's just the beauty of having a chart, honestly. And sometimes Smarty Pants really gives good pearls mm-hmm. as to how disease processes show and you're able to like write it down and you remember it because you've seen a question that related to it. Yes, and then Smarty Pants, I bought it for the entire year. It's not that expensive. I believe it's one of the cheaper options of question bags that we have out there. I want to say it's around seventy or eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. I'm not completely sure. Um, I'll go. We'll go ahead and put the link down below of Smarty Pants. This is a tool that we highly recommend because it has questions, it has the explanations, and it also gives you even little videos sometimes. A, the little videos, it just depends on the disease that you're studying and sometimes they have videos of actual patients experiencing that symptom and things like that. And another thing that we like to use is other question banks too. So we like to use Roche Review, mm-hmm. which is also really good. Our school is fortunate enough to get like a deal for us. So we did get it a little cheaper. So your program might offer that too. And if so, that's really nice. But if not, you can buy it on the side. Um, and I also really like UWorld. Mm-hmm. Um, those are really good. We also have board vitals through our school, and then we also have Exam Master through our school. Mm-hmm. So take advantage of all the question banks you have. Each question bank does things a little differently. Mm-hmm. They'll focus on certain diseases more than others, and it just helps you get an overall view of what you might see on your exam. And what's really nice about Roche Review is that if you get a question wrong or right, it's going to give you an entire explanation on why every single answer choice was wrong and why the right answer choice was correct. And they also have little pictures and images to kind of help you remember. Yeah, They even put charts in there. Yes, they do have charts in there too um, to kind of help you differentiate between different diseases that are really similar. U World does the same thing, but it's condensed, I, I believe. It's a little bit more condensed. It'll have it on like the side, yes. on a panel of like what the correct answer was. And a lot of times it has a chart there too, which mm-hmm. will like break down the diseases that kind of look like it, that present similar, but aren't the disease that the answer choice was looking for. U World is a little bit more challenging though. Um, we kind of leave U World for the last week or the last couple of days that we're studying. So we try to exhaust all of our question banks. I like to start with Smarty Pants because Smarty Pants, I feel, gives you a good foundation to know if you do know the knowledge or not. So I do Smarty Pants, then Rosh Review, and then U World. I usually start with uh, Rosh Review, then Exam Master, Mm -hmm. then I go to Smarty Pants, and then I do U World. Yes, and it doesn't matter what order you do it. It's completely up to you. As long as you are doing a lot of questions, that's definitely what's going to help you with ICM. ICM, it's all about recognizing the disease and being able to diagnose it and treat it. Disease can only be addressed so many ways, so the more practice questions that you do, the more you'll be able to recognize it. And that's honestly how we have been doing really well at ICM. We are switching gears now and we're going to learn how we study for pathology. So pathology is actually my favorite course. Love it so much. And honestly, it's because of these two resources that patho makes so much sense to me. The first one is going to be osmosis. Mm -hmm. And I know we talked about osmosis in our first video. 
but it is one of the best materials that you can use. It breaks down everything into details that it clicks in your head. Mm -hmm. They use pictures, they do drawings, and they break it down on a molecular level, which is what you need to know for patho. And I think that's the greatest resource that we have access to. Another resource that I like to use is Ninja Nerd. He does an amazing job of breaking down the disease. And honestly, that's the only reason why I passed GU was because of him. He's amazing. And honestly, um, whatever resource you decide to go with, mm -hmm. we recommend. Like Ninja Nerd is free. It's on YouTube. And shout out to him for keeping it free because he really knows exactly what he's mm -hmm. talking about. He's had like guest speakers on there that'll go through disease processes mm -hmm. too. And every person that he's brought on or himself, it, he's just amazing at breaking down the patho behind each of these diseases. I know he also has a website now and you can purchase kind of like his drawings and all of the things that he talks about. He writes them out and you can actually purchase it as a PDF. I am not subscribed to that only because it's a little expensive and um, I'm a broke college student right now. <laughs> she says that she has the bougiest coffee maker air fryer. <laughs> Just teasing. That, cut it out, cut it that out. hurt a little bit. Just kidding. With patho, I love to integrate it with clinical medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a really important thing because a lot of times when we're studying our courses, we wanna keep them in little separate boxes and we're like, oh, this is just patho. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is just clinical medicine. Oh, this is just pharmacology. But in reality, when we see a patient, we're not just saying, I'm only gonna tell you the patho about your disease. Sorry, I can't tell you how it presents or anything like that, but I'm only gonna tell you the patho. So you have to learn how to incorporate it into your clinical medicine, into your pharmacology. Because what I find myself doing is when I'm studying a disease, I not only like to go in at the patho, wherever I learn it, either osmosis or ninja nerd, and then I like to learn the pharmacology treatment that goes with the disease right then and there. So that when I'm learning and I'm reading a vignette, I'm already thinking, okay, it's this disease, I already know the patho mm -hmm. behind it, and now I know the treatment. So if it's asking me about treatment, I'm like, great, I know my treatment. Exactly. Now, with patho, unlike ICM, there is not a lot of resources where you can get questions from. However, you can make up your own questions. She likes to make up her own questions and ask me questions because patho and I, we're not best friends. We, we struggle a little bit, but we end up learning the material and it's all thanks to her because she will ask a question multiple times dressed, dressed in different ways and I'm able to answer it. So definitely another resource is get you a... Another great resource that we have access to is tutors. So our school takes the initiative to provide us tutoring as first years from the upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate to have an amazing tutor who tutors us in patho and we attend her sessions twice a week on Thursdays and Saturdays during the summer. Mm -hmm. And we're very grateful because she does take time out of her day. She's in clinical rotations as a second year. And she takes time out of her day to help us learn the material. Mm -hmm. And if y'all have any kind of resource like that, take advantage of it because mm -hmm. it's truly something to learn from the upperclassmen. They've been in our shoes. They know what we're going through. And sometimes they have pearls that they have learned from their professors and their and that they've seen in clinical rotations that they can give to us. Mm -hmm. So what's nice about tutoring is that first you go ahead and read the material. So that's the first time you hear the material. The second time you hear it is in class. The third time would be in tutoring. And the fourth time is when you are actually reviewing the material. So it's not like it's your first time seeing this. It's going to be like your third or fourth time seeing this information. and. If you do it so much, you're going to know the information. You're gonna memorize it. You're gonna just learn it. Like, yeah. I can ask Adi a bunch of questions, but she'll know it. No, yeah. she does know it. Like, we had our exams last week. Mm -hmm. I could ask her questions from Durham and she would know it because yeah. we made sure that we understood the patho behind each of the diseases. These are just a few ways that we study for ICM and patho. There's going to be a lot of different ways and methods that you're going to go ahead and learn how to study. It's all about trial and error. Yeah, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We really enjoy making content for y'all. Until next time. Bye. bye.